This is a quick introduction to the Ori Manager software, which is the application used to manage and configure Ori transmitters, docking stations, and docked receivers. This is an introduction to the software, but it's also going to walk you through the basic steps to configure your Ori devices so you can get them up and running from a fresh installation of the software and devices on default settings. I currently have a transmitter, the TX2N, and a four-way docking station, the D4, showing in my device list here. The first thing to make sure is that the devices are powered on and connected to the same network as the computer which is running the software. This can be part of a larger network, but it also supports a direct network connection between your Ori devices and your laptop. Note, it will take a bit longer for them to be discovered if using a direct connection. Now we can see these devices are online, but I've not authenticated with them yet. The devices are named by model number and the serial number so that you can easily identify which ones you're planning to start configuring. I'm going to start with the transmitter, so I'm going to click on that. And because I've not used the application before, it's going to start by asking me to provide a username and password that I want to use to manage the devices going forward. I'm going to just use admin lowercase as my username, and I'm going to use password as my secure password, and tick remember me so it's easier to log on, then click next. So now that I've provided the account details that I want to use, I have to log into this device with its factory default credentials. All of the devices use a default username of admin in uppercase, but the password is unique per device. There'll be a label on the back of both the transmitter and the docking station showing that information. In this instance, I have the password stored that I can copy and paste in. We've just got a short password there of letters and numbers. Now when I press login, that's confirmed that I've got the right default username and password, and it's now overwritten that with the admin account that I created. So the device is now configured using username of admin and the password of password. Now I've landed on the inputs page of the transmitter, and that's all on factory default settings. This will match how the device will be configured out of the box. First off, we get control of our two analog inputs on the device. If you have a Dante enabled unit, you'll see an additional option here to change each of these inputs to the Dante interface instead. I'm going to leave input 1 as it is, on line level with a suitable level of gain. That's giving me sensible level down here. But I've got a microphone connected to input 2 that requires phantom power. So I'm going to make a small adjustment there. I then have two streams or channels available, and these are what get routed through to my two radios or can be used to drive a line output or network audio stream. By default, these are both set to take a sum of the two inputs and stream two is unused by default. The radio is turned off for this. It doesn't go anywhere, so I'm going to leave this one as it is. I'm not going to use it. Stream one, I'm going to leave as a mono sum because I want my line level AV signal and my local microphone being routed into that. We have automatic gain control enabled and that's important. That means that even if my audio signals are fluctuating, the system will take control of a certain amount of the gain range in order to try and target this level around the minus 18 dB full scale level, which is the best optimized for the system. I have a low cut option, which I'm not going to use because I've got AV contents as well as the microphone going through here. At the moment, I'm not using any network audio, so I don't want to enable the test tone. So that's largely as I wanted. All I really had to do was change my second input to mic level, and then I'm going to go through to the outputs page. And this is essentially where I manage what happens with each of these two streams or channels. As I mentioned, the radio on the second stream is disabled by default, and I'm going to leave that as it is. I only want one broadcast from this transmitter. The broadcast names are set to use the serial number of the device for identification but we want to turn that into something a little more friendly, so I'm going to name that Auditorium. I'm going to leave the stream name as it is. These two names are displayed slightly differently depending on the device being used to connect. This one is essentially designed to add a bit more contextual information about the broadcast. 
I'm only using mono input sources, so I'm going to leave this radio mode in mono. And because I want it to be easy for everyone to connect, I'm going to leave encryption disabled. For the sample rate, I'm going to leave this as it is. To be AuraCast compliant, we have to be broadcasting either 16 kilohertz or 24 kilohertz. So if we want to broadcast high quality, that's normally done by enabling the second radio. But for this instance, I'm happy with the quality of 24 kilohertz. I'm going to leave it on full transmit power because I've got a decent sized auditorium to cover and I don't need to adjust the output options at the moment. Lastly, I'm going to review the final settings page, which gives me some read-only information around the device. I could change network parameters if I need to, but all I'm going to do for now is just give the device a more friendly name so that I can see it in the device listing. So having done that, I'm going to click back to my devices page, and I can now see that the device has been renamed and it's authenticated as admin because I've logged into it but my docking station is still on factory defaults. I'm going to click on that and provide the default username and password as before. This will use my existing credentials to configure a new account. I've put in the default username and password and hit login. Now you can see that that's loaded, the settings from the docking station. We have a slightly different set of controls here. The dock stores a set of receiver settings which we can update and then transfer to any receivers. And I'm going to leave all of these on default because they work quite well for my needs. I can see I've got one receiver here in the first slot of my docking station, which is on full battery and all working okay. So there's even less I want to change on the docking station. This library page here allows us to populate both the docking station and the receivers with a library of broadcasts. That's primarily for providing access to encrypted broadcasts where we need to have a password available to connect. The left-hand panel will list all available broadcasts from the transmitters that are connected to the network, and the right-hand panel will list what's populated in the dock library. If I want to transfer one across, then I just click it from this left panel, and that will then be updated in the dock library and copied onto the receivers. I don't actually need these here because I'm using open broadcasts. I don't have an encryption enabled, so the receiver will be able to see all of the broadcasts without configuring anything in the library. So lastly, just onto the settings page. Again, I'm going to also give my docking station a more friendly name. Most of the settings here match that of the transmitter but we have an auto-update portable setting to keep your receiver firmware up to date rather than a status LED option. So that is really all I need to do in order to get my system configured for the first time and up and running. I'm now able to take the receiver, turn it on, and I will pick up the auditorium broadcast that my transmitter is putting out, and I'm able to listen to audio content being broadcast there.